Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support our channel, please subscribe. The Death Effigies of the Tudor Kings and Queens For centuries in history, the deaths of kings and queens were marked in strange ways. There was a tradition and a formality to the state funerals of monarchs. Following the death of Queen Victoria, the Queen had ruled for so long that no one knew how to plan her military funeral and there was a significant amount of infighting within the royal household because of this. But one staple of funerals of monarchs since the medieval times was an effigy. This was a model that showed some resemblance to the king or queen, and these would be placed on top of the coffins of the deceased during the funeral procession, so people could pay their respects and imagine what the person inside looked like. The effigies were usually dressed in clothes of the dead, and they were lavish models, but many have survived the years and the centuries. But what is the story of the effigies of the Tudor kings and queens? The first Tudor monarch to rule over England was Henry VII and Elizabeth of York. They married, uniting the warring factions of the Walls of the Roses, of the House of Lancaster and the House of York. But following Elizabeth of York's death inside the Tower of London after childbirth, her husband, Henry VII, was distraught. Elizabeth's funeral would take place inside of Westminster Abbey, and it was a lavish ceremony, but an effigy was cast of her which was made from pear wood, and it shows Elizabeth's head and arm. It would have been a full model, which was covered in the Queen's clothes, and would have been placed on top of her coffin. It is remarkable that this effigy still survives, and a wig would have been placed on the effigy head. For many people who would witness the funeral procession, it would have been the first time they saw any semblance of the Queen's image, and most would not have known what she looked like. In 1941, during a bombing raid on London during World War II, the bodies of those such as Elizabeth of York, which was made of plaster or straw, caught fire and were destroyed. They were also restored, but Henry VII's funeral effigy is said to have bore a rather similar resemblance to him. His plaster head, which survives today, is a close image of what the king looked like in his later years, and he has short hair and a pensive look on his face. This effigy was made based on a death mask of the Tudor king, which is why it was a lifelike resemblance or as following his death and as part of the embalming process, the royal physicians would have took a plaster cast of Henry VII's face. His funeral took place inside of Westminster Abbey, and he is buried inside of the Lady Chapel that he ordered the creation of, and the inscription on his tomb states, Henry VII rests within this tomb, he who was the splendour of kings and lit the light of the world, a wise and watchful monarch, a courteous lover of virtue, outstanding in beauty, vigorous and mighty, who brought peace to his kingdom, who waged very many wars, who always returned victorious from the enemy, who wed both his daughters to kings, who was united to kings, indeed to all, by treaty, who built this holy temple and erected this tomb for himself, his wife and his children, he completed more than 53 years and bore the royal sceptre for 24. The 15th hundred year of the Lord had passed, and the ninth after that was running its course, when dawned the black day. The 21st dawn of April was shining. When this so great monarch ended his last day, no earlier ages gave thee so great a king. O England, hardly will ages to come give thee his like. But one effigy which has not survived time is that of Henry VIII. The funeral hearse that contained the remains of the formerly large and brutal Tudor monarch was said to have been huge. His body was carried in a chariot which had many wheels and it was covered with black velvet and it was a heraldic banner. It was pulled by eight huge strong horses which were ridden by eight children and the chariot carried his coffin which on top of the wooden box was the effigy. The effigy was carved from wood and wax and it dressed in expensive robes and top of its head was the imperial crown. The effigy was so valuable that when the cortege stopped to rest at Sion Abbey that the effigy was kept under an armed guard. 
but as mentioned, Henry VIII's effigy has not survived the centuries and it has been lost to time. The only thing remotely similar to an effigy which, which exists of Henry VIII is an effigy head which was used in the display of the line of kings, in which Henry VIII was depicted riding a horse in his armour, which is housed inside the Tower of London. But this is just a museum exhibition and was not used in the funeral procession. But one Tudor monarchs that did survive was Henry VIII's daughter Mary. Now Mary I would die childless on the 17th of November 1558 and she was also buried inside of Westminster Abbey. She is interred in a vault in the north aisle of Henry VII's Lady Chapel in a coffin and a tomb monument was later added when her half-sister Elizabeth I was buried on top of her. The funeral effigy of Mary I exists and the head and unclothed body are still inside of Westminster Abbey. It shows Mary with a rather pensive look on her face and she has a rather small nose and a small mouth. But what is noticeable is that the effigy is rather large and also strangely is not the most flattering image. It shows Mary with a rather large stomach or bump on her front and her backside also seems to be very large. This may have been done and carved to show her looking larger and more powerful when it was clothed in the royal robes. A wig would have also been placed on the effigy's head. Now the final Tudor monarch was Elizabeth I, who has been long regarded as one of the greatest Tudor monarchs. She would during her reign defeat spectacularly the Spanish Armada and would also execute her cousin, Mary Queen of Scots. Elizabeth's time on the throne was categorised by a birth of culture and exploration, but in 1603, Elizabeth I died and her funeral was a huge spectacle, and many across the nation mourned their queen. But her effigy was rather interesting. To help preserve it, in 1760, it was remade and was later restored in 1995, and it is made from wax, meaning it is rather delicate. But during the restoration process, some of the clothes that were on the effigy were discovered to have been original, and the corset and drawers that the effigy was clothed in partly were found to have been clothes that were original and would have belonged to Elizabeth I. Her funeral effigy had sat on top of the coffin, and it was a rather similar countenance to the portraits of Elizabeth, and show her looking very powerful but also very young. But the Tudor effigies are an interesting look into what the infamous monarchs from the most famous royal family to oversee England look like. Many people across the nation had never seen their monarchs, as they would not see them on the television or in newspapers and were extremely rare that they'd actually ever see them to begin with. But when mourners would line the streets to catch a glimpse of the royal coffin, they would see the effigy and it would be the first time they'd see something resembling their monarch. Today, effigies have been considered a thing of the past, and it's been a long time since an effigy was cast of a deceased monarch. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.